a Hello. how are you Hello. good thanks uh chiara right so we're waiting on one more person okay uh and then we'll just go for it all right cool have you done any bookmaking before? I've gone to a couple of zine making workshops, uh -huh. um, and that's about it. <laughs> Did you hear in Raleigh or in Durham? Yeah, it was through the school. The It was like a workshop the library was doing. Oh, OK, cool. Mm -hmm. and, and how did you find out about this class? So I actually, um, I, I'm a Caldwell Fellow. And they want us to use, we have stipend funds every year. And I figured since the craft center was doing everything online, I could do some of that during the summer with the money. So nice. yeah, I just thought it'd be pretty cool. Awesome. Okay, great. Um, and I assume you've been down here before. Yeah, I actually, my dorm is the one, the building right next to that. <laughs> oh, so that's easy. So we can even do it outside. Right. <laughs> we can just scream to each other. Well, yeah, except we're not supposed to do that. <laughs> Eventually, we can do that. Eventually, yeah. So while we're waiting to see if um, the other student comes, I'm going to start off by showing you a few basic techniques in bookbinding. OK. Um, the whole premise of this online class was just to show you quick and easy ways and methods of getting ideas onto paper, into a book, without anything fancy. No staples, no glue, no sewing, you know, not having to worry about like a hard cover or a soft cover. So it's kind of like a, a quick, fun, easy thing to do wherever you are. If you have a piece of paper and a pencil, you can make a book basically. And the format's really, really easy. So, but I'll also show you a few other formats just to you know give you some more background information as well so um let's see seven we'll wait one more minute and then i'll just go for it okay uh and i i'm assuming you can see both me and the book or the cover of the yes book. okay so you know it's up to you toggle between the two you know, obviously when I'm talking, you don't need to see my face <laughs> as long as you can hear me. Um, I'm going to show you sta uh, stab bound. And I'll talk to you about that uh, pamphlet. Um, obviously the one page uh, accordion. So I'll show you a, a couple of you know, formats just so that in the future, if you ever wanted to do something, it'll be there for you. It'll be like in the back of your mind. Okay. Okay, cool. Awesome. Uh, so let us begin. All right. All right. So I'll, real quick. Yeah. I'm just going to note that my Wi Fi is really bad. So if I randomly leave the meeting, it's because my Wi Fi went out. <laughs> no problem. I'll, I'll be here waiting for you. Okay, thank you. <laughs> so this book here is a pamphlet bound. And so there are a few different ways of making a pamphlet bound. So zines typically are pamphlets and this one is stapled. So this book was silk screened by a student. Um, I'll tell you a little bit about my background. I was over at School of Visual Arts for over 20 years in Manhattan, and I ran the uh, printmaking department. I was a shop manager there, and I also taught uh, a lot, if not every class at one point. And I taught at a bunch of different universities and different programs and started a whole bunch of different things up there. So the uh, examples that I'll show you today are from previous students' work, just so you know. So this one was half silk screened. So the cover was silk screened. 
And then the inside pages are Xerox. So this is about a little octopus. You know, it's kind of nice. It's a story without words. And then black and white Xeroxing, and then back to silk screening. So all the full color stuff is done by hand with silk screening. And then the nice thing about this one is that there's a centerfold page, but then you also have a page that opens up and becomes twice as big. So it's almost like a little poster that's in there. And then it's back to the Xeroxing. The octopus makes off with the bucket. And then the artist's name, Dave. So that's one um, pamphlet. Here's another one, slightly larger. Again, this one was silk screen. This one's also stapled as well. So there's one, two staples. The other option instead of stapling is to sew. So right here, I'll open it up. Nice color silk screen done on a kind of Canson burgundy paper. And then one color silk screen on cream paper. Two colors, kind of nice. Center fold. Typically, when you have the centerfold, you have the most information. So it gives you a big area to work with. And then back through. So whenever you're laying out a book or a zine or something, you just want to make sure that you're thinking of pagination. How does the book flow from one to the next? one page to the next, how is the information going? And also a book is tactile, whether it's a quick zine or, or something more substantial, you want, you want it to be eligible, you want the reader to actually want to see it. Um, here's another little pamphlet zine. So this is just sketches from a student's sketchbook. So they did the cover in a thicker stock, and then the inside pages on, on a thinner paper. So it was literally just, they took their sketchbook and made a whole bunch of Xerox copies and then laid it out, mocked it up. So it was all stuff out of Grand Central. So they had like a, I think it was, they had a life drawing class at Grand Central. So these were the sketches from there. Centerfold, you can see the staples poking out. And then signed. So just kind of nice. This person also did this book. Same kind of idea. So this one is about sketches, again, in Grand Central, but this one done in color. And this one is called an accordion book because it opens up as an accordion, and you can kind of see that here. So basically, when we're talking about accordion books, there's two styles. There's independent covers, which this one is independent. It has no spine. And then there's the other style where it has a spine. So this one, you, you would either open up and go from page to page. or you could pull it apart and see the whole image all in one shot. And the nice thing about accordion books is that they can stand up. So if you're showing it in a show or something, it's kind of nice that you can have a vitrine and actually see it. So the same student's artwork, just one was black and white sketches and then the other one was realized more in full color. This one was silk screen, and then this one is just Xeroxing.
Here is another accordion. So this one's smaller. Same idea. So this one is fun in that there's two different sides. So there's front, open up, limited color, or two colors, I should say, silk screening. So this was hand silk screen. Hey, Anna. Hi, I'm so sorry. I went crazy. I haven't been in the groceries for two months and I saw my items and I was hoarding. Sorry, guys, I'm so sorry. So I'm just showing some examples right now so that you can see, you know, a couple of different ideas. Um, this one is an accordion book. So basically, again, like an accordion that you play, opens and closes. Two colors with silk screening. So this was hand silk screen, but one of the colors is transparent. So the yellow going over the red transparent, you get this orange color here. Now, when I flip the book over, I have just a one color. And it's kind of fun to see that. So kind of fun that you can print on both sides of the paper. So that's another accordion. Um, this one is a nice bright colored book. So this was hand silk screen. This is pamphlet. This student actually, and you'll kind of, you'll kind of see it through his artwork. So this was all hand silk screen by a student named John Vermilia. I think he ended up going to work for Nickelodeon. So a little space zombie aliens, it's kind of fun. They're freezing and melting everybody. Nice, bright, vivid colors. That was kind of a hallmark of his, uh, of his stuff with these nice, bright colors. And then the one fun thing is that the cover actually opens up into a poster. So it's kind of fun. So that's kind of a, a nice little neat thing to do. You can have a poster built into the cover. This one is done with wood cover. And this one is using a technique called stab bound. Now there's two versions of stab binding or a couple of different versions. Stab binding, in this case, there's staples in here. You could do it sewn. It would be called Japanese binding. Or you can use uh, pop rivets or uh, screws. In this case, what the student did was they came up with their mock-up. They came up with their information. They had their pages laid out. And then they stapled through here. And then use this cloth on the outside to cover it up. And then it all got glued to the cover. So when you open it up, it's bioluminescence. It's kind of hard to see here, but you can kind of see it. But there are these nice, really nice silk screen pages done on uh, a very thin tissue paper. And you can kind of see the images come through the back if I push it down. Now, this technique of folding a piece of paper over and using that, you can kind of see it here. So that's called French fold, where I'm folding one piece of paper over to make it feel more substantial. So you can get away with printing on a thinner piece of paper, but then make it feel a little bit thicker and more robust just by folding it over. So all these pages are just French fold, there's text, there's a squirrel. So a nice limited use of color. The colors on the inside of the book also go along with the, um, 
end paper and also the cover. So it's nice to tie things together. And then you're through the book. And here's a nice piece where they printed on both sides of the paper. So where you're seeing the text, the text is on the top page and then the inside piece, and you can kind of, if I angle it, here you go. The inside has the green. So when you're looking through it, it gives it this kind of like eerie, kind of like foggy feeling. So it's kind of nice. And that's something that you can do when you're playing with um, silk screens and different materials. So this was another nice uh, option for silk screening. A lot of people like doing silk screening because there's so many different materials to uh, print on. And then what we did with the, uh, the text is we took um, type and there's like a type that you can stamp. It's like metal type and you can hit it. And we actually embossed it into the wood. So this is all embossed into the wood, the bioluminescence. Here's another quick stab bound, uh, not stab bound, sorry, a pamphlet. So just your normal kind of comic book where it's stapled in the center. So the cover is Xerox on blue paper, and then the inside is just Xerox on white paper. So it's just all little sketches that they had. You know, there's all these little fun little monsters and stuff. Here's another one, one of the last ones I'll show you as an example. So this book is by um, a student or an artist. Her name is Tomi. So it's a hardcover. So the nice thing about this is this is silk screened on one piece of paper, but the way she figured out the folding is really, really interesting. So you open it up and then you have this image. And then this opens up in half again, and then you have another image. And then it opens up in half again, and you have another image. And then it opens up in half again, and you get a larger image. But this is all done on one piece of paper. So it's just the folding that she did. Now, the line work might look familiar to you. Do you guys know um, Casper mattresses? The ones you buy in the box? So this is the artist that came up with the whole Casper logo and the kind of cute design. So she was a student of mine and she had a really, really nice kind of like sense about her. And then she got hired by Casper and then she did their whole line. Does that look good? And you guys can unmute yourselves. <laughs> I just bought uh, mattresses earlier this year, so I, I'm all best, but yeah, that looks awesome. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's one of those things where like, you start off somewhere and then life takes you someplace else. So here's what we're gonna be doing tonight. So this book is made out of one piece of paper. So you have the cover, Page one, page two, page three, page four, five, six. So it's a cute little story. And then the back cover. So it's just a little figure throwing the paper airplane, the paper airplane going through the air, past the other buildings, past the dog, flying through the air, into the park, across the yard, to the woman waiting for her response and then the end. So the way this is done and the way you guys are gonna make your, your books, this is all done on one piece of paper. Now it doesn't matter what size the paper is, okay? Because all it is is folding the paper. The bigger the paper, the bigger the pages are. That's all. 
So folding it, and then we have a book. So I'm going to show you guys how to do this setup. Okay. So I'm going to take just a piece of paper. So this is just out of a printer. This is just eight and a half by 11 printer paper. Okay. So you're going to take that paper and you're going to fold it in half. Now, besides giving you a little bit of background with um, the books and the different styles, whether it's accordion or spab bound Japanese, I'm also going to talk to you about tools. So here are some tools for bookmaking. So these are called bone folders. So these are actually made from cow bones and they're different shapes. This one in the middle is a horn folder. So this one was made from a cow's horn. They all do the same thing. And now if you are vegan and don't wanna use a bone folder, at least they also have plastic ones made out of Teflon. But the nice thing about bone folders is that you can score paper and fold it down nicely so that it has a nice crisp edge, okay? So I'm just gonna use, I'll just use this little horn folder, okay? So you're gonna take your paper, fold it in half, right? And the way to use a, a bone folder, or in this case, a horn folder, is you're using the edge to make a nice, crisp, flat edge. So by rubbing this across the paper, it'll be nice and flat. If you don't have that, it doesn't matter because you could just use your fingernail or a pencil or something hard. So I folded it in half. Now I'm going to take this and fold it in half again. And then take that and you can fold it in half again. Okay. Now, this is the only tricky part about this. So you have this piece of paper that's been folded in half, folded in half, folded in half. What you're going to do is this area right here in the middle, and I'm just gonna draw it in pencil so you guys can see it a little bit better. That piece here is what you're just going to cut. So I have a little exacto blade that you can use a sharp knife or whatever. And I'm just gonna cut that seam from here to here. You can use a ruler if you want to be really, really precise. That's the only thing you need to do in order to get this book. So now I have the paper, it's folded, right? So now I'm going to fold it in half and I'm going to pop these two pages out this way. So can you guys see that? So it's folded and then opened up this way. So that now I have a book. So I'll write cover. So this will be page one, page two, page three, page four, five, six, and then back cover. So I have cover. Can you go back to the pop out part? <laughs> Sorry. Oh. So here, I'll show, you, I'll show you what it looks like as one piece of paper. Okay. Oh, gotcha. Okay. Oh, it's better.
things. So after you lay it out, you'll have one, two, three, four, five, six, facing the other way, back cover, cover on the same. Okay, got it. Oh, gotcha. Cool. Got it. <laughs> so now, obviously, the pages on this are kind of small, but that's the only dictation is the size paper that you're starting out with. So the larger the paper, the bigger these individual pages will be. So this is eight and a half by 11, a standard piece of paper, right? Now, if I use 11 by 17 piece of paper, same idea. So I'm just gonna fold this in half and you can fold it lengthwise or horizontally. Doesn't matter which way you fold first. So that. I'll use my little phone folder. Then fold it again in half. A bone folder actually comes in handy with thicker pieces of paper. So now you can see what size this is. So this is the this is the 11 by 17 paper, and this is the eight and a half by 11 paper. And you can see the difference in in page size. And again, this works on any size piece of paper. You can have a sheet of paper as big as your table. The only thing that will happen is that your page size and your artwork can be a lot bigger. Same idea is gonna happen. This will be my cover, page one. Oh, sorry. I forgot to do this. If you start doing things like this, it doesn't work because then it ends up doing like that. So that part where you're cutting it is actually really important. going to cut this piece. And then pop it out. So then we have cover, page one, page two, page three, four, five, six, and back. So again, same format just bigger areas for you to work in. Now, a lot of times, you know, you might have a piece of paper and you're like, okay, what, what story do I want to come up with? You know, the story can be anything. What I did recently, actually last week, I took my kids for a bike ride. I took an eight and a half piece of paper, folded it into this book, right? And I took a small little pencil with me. I put it in my pocket and we went for a bike ride. We stopped at the edge of the woods and I had them collect a bunch of different leaves. And then what I did with the leaves was I stuck them in between the sheets of paper and I did rubbings. So each page had a different leaf. So it was, it was almost a documentation of our little bike ride. So it was kind of a, a cute little fun idea. It was nothing that drastic or important, but it was a cute little way for them to have a little token. Instead of keeping the leaves, you know, we had rubbings of the leaves and rubbings of the bark from the tree and rubbings of a rock that was nearby and flat. So we had all these different textures, but done as rubbings. So it was kind of cute. So it was like one of those things where like, you know, I would take the leaf and I would put it under there and I would just take the pencil and do like a rubbing like that. 
and then you would get you know, the rubbing of the leaf or the rock or the bark or whatever it was. You know, so your ideas can come from anywhere. This format allows you the ease of just having a whole book and not having to worry about glue, not having to worry about um, staples, not having to worry about, you know, cutting the paper so all the pages are the same. You know, when you're making a book like, like this, for instance, you know, there's a lot of things to keep in mind. I have to make sure that the color works well. I have to make sure that the paper's cut down properly. I have to make sure that I score it and fold it. I have to make sure that, you know, page one is also the back of maybe page eight. So I have to keep in mind all the math and, and that's involved in all that. You know, when I'm doing a regular book, I might have in a zine format, you might have something where I take the paper and I fold it in half and you do a mock-up and all of a sudden I have page one, page two, page three, page four, five, six, seven, and then back cover. So now when I'm, when I'm doing this, I have to keep track of front cover and back cover are obviously on the, on the same piece of paper. But then I also have page, page two and page seven on that as well. And then I also have page three, and in this case, four, five, and six are on the same piece of paper. So there's more math, there's more logistics. And of course, when you're getting a bigger book, you're doing a lot more pages. So you have to keep track of page two and page 12 are together and they're back and forward. So you have to keep all that in, you know, in the back of your head. Whereas something like this, it's very, very easy to do. I have everything already built in. If I wanted it to make it a little bit more complicated, then I can always just do a poster on the, on the back of that. That could be a cute little, you know, thing that you do for the inside. So now I have this whole sheet of paper. So let's say maybe this is, I don't know, whatever. It's a fish. So the poster would be, I don't know, the fish. The cover is fishtails. Fishtails. Page one could be, you know, a fish. Page two could be a rock with another fish. But it's something that's easy that you could figure out. It's quick. You're going through page to page to page. It takes all the guesswork out of doing everything else. I don't have to worry about stapling. I don't have to worry about gluing it. I don't have to worry about sewing it. So this format's really, really easy. You know, it's a nice way to tell a story. It's also a quick and cheap way to tell a story. With one of these other books, um, especially the hardcover books, like something like this one, I have to buy book board. I have to get jade glue. This one has really nice paper. This paper is a very nice thick paper. So the board is probably $5. The book cloth was probably $12. The paper on the inside is about three seventy-five, dollars So there's a lot of different added extra costs into it. If you wanted to come up with something and you wanted to sell a bunch of them, you know, this becomes more of an investment, of an initial investment. I'm taking a lot of money and I'm putting this into this and maybe I sell this for $25 each. But I have to also make the book, 
I have to bind it, I have to glue it together, and I have to do all that. Whereas this, because I used a piece of 11 by 17 or an eight and a half by 11, I could come up with the artwork and draw it. And then I could take this and Xerox it and make a hundred and then sell each one for a dollar. And all it takes is me folding it then and cutting it and selling it. So now all of a sudden I have something that was easy to make and something that I could sell for very cheap and get into the hands of lots of other people, whether it's for sale or it's a pamphlet for information, like how to make your own mask during a pandemic, whatever. It's something that you can use to disseminate information. It's something that you can use to have fun with. It's something that is, you know, super, super easy to make. And it really doesn't take that much time. The initial time is all based on your setup. When you're doing something like this and you do want to promote it or you do want to sell it, I definitely would recommend making a mock-up. You know, take a piece of paper, try out different types of paper. Like this is just really, really cheap copy paper. It's acid-free, so it's archival. Acid-free meaning that over time, the paper won't disintegrate and fall apart. If you're using, um, if you're using something like newsprint paper, newsprint paper is made from just basically tree bark. That paper over the course of weeks and months will start to get brittle and dry and actually just fall apart. Some papers, when you fold them, they actually will crack. So another nice thing to do is actually test out your paper. You might find a paper that you really, really like and you think, oh, I like the color, I like the texture, I like how smooth it is, but then you go ahead and you, you fold it and then you fold it again, fold it again, and then you open it up and sometimes the paper will break. If you notice, paper is like wood, like this wood has a wood grain. Even though this is fake wood, we're gonna use this as kind of an example. So the wood has a wood grain and this wood grain goes in this direction. The paper, when they actually make it, also has a wood grain. So sometimes with certain papers, you'll see that they actually fold easier in one direction, whether it's on the horizontal or on the vertical, because it's going with the actual grain of the fibers. So that's, a, that's another thing to keep in mind. So there's lots of different things to think about, but, you know, and the nice thing about this, and the reason why, you know, I wanted to show this, is that for an initial investment into one piece of paper that you have someplace lying around your house, whether it's um, a, a piece of a book or a magazine or a copy paper or um, colored paper, whatever it is, you all have a sheet of paper someplace in your house and you could fold it up and turn it into a, into a story. Now I can take this and I'm, like I said, I could Xerox this. I could take this and I could collage into it. I could take different pieces and glue them onto this and using this as a structure or a scaffolding, I could build a book onto it. So instead of drawing onto this piece of paper, I can actually glue things to it. So there's lots of different things you can do with this format, you know, and that's the really fun aspect of having a book that you make out of one piece of paper. Like think of the endless possibilities. I can have something, you know, now that tells me a quick way of like all the places that sell, you know, disinfectant. I can have a little pamphlet that shows somebody how to make a mask or how to sew it. So there's a lot of fun things that you can do with it. You know, the thing that I did with my, with my kids going on a bike ride and just taking leaves and doing a rubbing. You know, it's a quick little fun thing. And you can have this, like this, this size folds nicely and put into your pocket with a little kind of like golf pencil. And you do rubbings of like manhole covers or, um, you know, wood or benches or anything flat. It's kind of like a fun little thing. And you could do one every day. And at the end of the week, you would have seven little books. You know, we're all stuck at home doing things. 
might as well make the time, you know, the most of it, you know? So it's one of those things where you don't have to have a lot of resources in order to be creative. Something like this is super, super easy. Very kind of after you figure this out of the cutting and the folding part, it's very easy. It becomes almost second nature then. All right? Now, can you guys actually do it on your own and fold it and cut it? Have you tried it now? Yeah? Yeah, okay. Yara, you tried it? So, mm -hmm. well, how does it feel now when you have a book in your hands? Um, it's great, actually. And uh, I was thinking one of the uses. I have to study every six months, whatever, and memorize the same stuff over and over again. This will make much nicer to have the information, you know, divided and pretty and, you know. So I, I just have a quick question. Yeah. What did you say, bio, the, the painting on the, the books that you are showing? Bio, that's, the, that's the technique? That's the paper? That's the paint? I'm yeah. sorry. I, I that, thought that was amazing. No, no, this was just the title of the book. Oh, okay. But the, the one with the, um, the, the zombie and the dog and the zombie dog and the ice, whatever, it is just hand uh, drawn and just regular. So, so with this one? Yeah. Or it's, you said so, something about silk screen? So I don't know. Both done using silk screening. Do you guys know what silk screen is? I've done it before. I was just, I'm not sure if what I did is what you're referring to. So, you all have t-shirts, right? So, those t-shirts were silk screen. So, silk screening is a way of actually passing ink through a frame. So, it's a, it's a more advanced stencil. At one point, the, the screen was actually made out of silk. Now, it's Dacron. So it's a commercial printing process. Andy Warhol used it, Rauschenberg. So it was a commercial printing process that got co-opted into a fine art process or you know something really, really simple and easy. The credit card you guys have in your wallet, that white spot where you sign it, that's actually silk screened on. Bottles, like glass bottles, when you see like the type and everything on it, that's silk screened onto it. Huh. So there are a lot of techniques that are done with silk screening. T-shirts, band posters, um, you could print on glass, you can print on paper, metal, wood. So in this case, this artist, John, he has a very cartoony style. So when he made his silk screen, he actually drew out and, you know, I'm, I'm assuming, Kiara, when you were doing yours, that you were doing it the same way. You either had a drawing or you used a computer or printed out something and then you would shoot Hi. that onto a screen. We um, hmm. use like thin plastic sheets and cut out with X-Actos the shapes and uh -huh. then put, the, put it on the fabric and use the silk screen. Yeah, I mean, there are a lot of different ways. I mean, I did a, a quick video for Speedball the other week and I used the sun. So I coated the screen with a light sensitive emulsion. And then I took leaves and uh, petals from a rose and I actually shot it onto the screen in the sunlight for 30 seconds. And then I used that and I made a uh, print. Uh, actually, I'll step off camera for a second. I have a print over here that I'm taking out from the craft center. And you can see another idea of it. That is pretty cool. I know, right? <laughs> So this is, it's in plastic, but, so you can kind of see, you guys do that? Hmm. So this is silk screen. Uh -huh. So this is actually me using actual plants and petals. And the sun, you said. Well, this one wasn't the sun. This one was um, more of a commercial or, or what I teach here usually at the, at the craft center. So this is using separation. But in, but in John's case, what he did was he was trained as an illustrator. So his work was very kind of cartoony. See, he was kind of like an illustrator slash cartoonist. So his style stayed, stayed the same. So when he did this, 
he made his drawings. Now for silk screening, when you're, when you're printing colors, you're creating artwork for each color because you have to hand print each color and layer one color over the other color. So it's, it's in this case, he's also using transparent color. So when you see, uh -huh. for instance, this green color here in the earth, mm -hmm. actually the blue color and the yellow color overlapping each other and giving you the green color. So he can, wow. print, you can print transparently or opaque, and in this case it was transparent. So you can get more colors than you're actually printing. So it's a nice kind of fun way to work. Like this kind of um, blue, bluish color here, or bluish purple color is actually the pink and the blue overlapping and giving him this purpley shadow color. So, you know, he liked to combine colors with transparency and it was, a, and it was you know, a nice fun way for him to work. But these are all done by hand. So the artwork was all hand drawn and then silk screen by hand. Same thing with, the, with this book. So these pages were all drawn by hand and then silk screen by hand. Same thing with the accordion book. So these were all drawn by hand. That is fantastic. <laughs> and, they're, and they're nice. And you can see, even though this is silk screen, this still looks like the way that Mark would work in his sketchbook, right? This still works the way John would work in his sketchbook. So even though there's two different people and they're using the same medium, silk screening, it still resembles the way that they work. So they're not losing their own personal ideas. You know, and that's something that's fun to do and it's fun to learn. I've had students do silk screen t-shirts and do a whole kind of huge, you know, business out of it. Now, you know, now that they're, you know, their t-shirts and stuff, they're also making masks, silk screening masks and then sewing them. So they're, they're adapting to the times as well, you know, which is what I was saying with the books. You can use these uh, to disseminate information, whether it's real news or whether it's fake news, that's up to you. But it's one of those things where, you know, it's an easy format to have. It's something quick, you know. I could take this, make a bunch of them, you know, Xerox 100 of them, and then go over to the Republican place over there and just throw a bunch of these at their doorstep. So... <laughs> basically up to you. Whatever information you want to put into them is totally up to you. So do you guys have any other questions about materials or formats? Yeah, so I guess kind of continuing about the silk, silk screening, um, is I guess it's a different kind of ink for it to be opaque versus transparent? In, actually, it's the same ink. Oh, really? Yeah. So, so the way silk screen works is um, when we're using silk screening, the majority of it is opaque. Whether you're printing on t-shirts, uh, sometimes you'll have a super opaque, like if I'm printing on a black t-shirt, then I want, and I want to print white on a black t-shirt, I want to make sure that the white stays white and doesn't look kind of like gray or cloudy. So it's very, very opaque. When I'm printing it, if I'm using it to do a book or something, I can take that and I can add what's called tint base to it. So tint base is basically just clear medium. So no pigment in it. The more clear base I have to color ratio, the tra more transparent my ink will be. So I can, I can print with just clear base and have it totally transparent, or I can go all the way to completely opaque. Same ink, but I'm using an additive to make it more transparent. Hmm, interesting, okay. Another thing you could do with silk screen is actually you can print with, um, well, circuit boards are actually printed. A lot of circuit, circuit boards are actually silk screen. So I did a project where I silk screened a uh, conductive material and I formed a circuit so I can turn on a light with a piece of paper. You gotta be kidding me. <laughs> no, it's conductive, it's fine. There are, 
there's a conductive ink that you can get. So if I wanted to embed some kind of circuitry into a fabric, into like say a, a shirt, I can actually silk screen that onto fabric and have it conductive. I can do like heart rate monitor or whatever it is I need. You can do heat sensitive Chris. ink. So you remember those, those shirts where you put your hand on it and it would change color from the heat from your hand? Mm -hmm. You can get those inks. I did a project where we silk screen text onto a panel. And then over that text, I put a color of, of this heat sensitive ink. So you couldn't read the text until you put your hand on the panel and then change the ink to transparent to read the text below it. Wow. Actually, my sweatshirt that I'm wearing, can you guys see this? Uh-huh. Mm -hmm. I kind of. Yeah. Is this skull flowers? Yeah, that's kind of like. And deer, something, I guess, horns, I'm not sure. For sweat and tears? Oh, pre and sweat and tears. <laughs> it was one of the things that I made for, for my shop guys. So this, isn't, this is not ink, this is bleach. <laughs> so there's a technique called discharge printing, where you're not printing with color, you're removing the actual color from the fabric. So you're discharging or removing the color. So it's kind of like the bleach pens that you would use to clean like the grout in your bathroom, that kind of consistency. Uh -huh. But you would pass it through your screen and then you use a steam iron and the steam iron activates the bleach and removes the dye from the fabric. So it's kind of fun. It's like when people discolor their hair of chocolate. Yeah. Okay. How much are these supplies? I'm sorry, I don't know if you guys, sorry about this. I, uh, I got a question. That, that, the, going back to the book a little bit, but I'm sorry, Kiara, I like, I like your questions too. So the, the lady that you showed, the Casper lady, that you said that she didn't, uh, she didn't glue any. This, this is all. One, that's just one, one piece of paper. So when you open it, oh, maybe not. Oops. Shoot, hang on. There. So this is all just folding, one sheet of paper. But the way that she folds it forces you to travel through her story. The uh whole. -huh. But it's all. It, but it, all it is is just one sheet of paper, and she's printed it on both sides. But it's still only one piece of paper, and this is silk screen too. Silk screen colors so you're folding it and the way she folds it you're forced to read along with it even though there are no words oh i it that's just amazing and uh i'm sorry about my headset is completely going nuts now but um it's one paper there is no nothing it's just this is amazing the whole picture you know history uh, story it's amazing one piece of paper and the colors of silk screening. So it's red and black. It's kind of nice in, in its simplicity that it's just kind of like the red and black colors. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, you're, you're going through it. I don't know what's going on here. But, you know, you have a reclining Buddha. <laughs> noodles. It's very elegant, yeah. the color. And, and now that I've told you about like, you know, Casper, you can kind of see her like, her little kind of like animals that she was working with. And when you think about the Casper lines, there was like two colors. The whole project that she did was, was basically a light blue and a dark blue for Casper. And that's her, her whole thing was always like two colors. That's amazing. Sorry for my technical, whatever it is that's going on. So, Kiara, going back to your, your question about price, obviously there's a whole range of prices. Mm -hmm. So, you could start out by doing something for, you know, on the low end. So, I also work with Speedball, and I came up with um, a little thing that you could do at home, and for a silk screen, um, emulsion, reclaimer, a squeegee, clamps, and black ink, it was $58.
So it's really not that much, but I could do something on the low end of the spectrum or I could spend thousands of dollars. So there's, there's, you know, there's the whole gamut. You can go low end and actually get good quality prints and you can go high end, you know, and sky's the limit. You know, one little jar of, remember that, um, that ink that I was telling you about, that conductive ink? So a jar this big is about $120. Oh, <laughs> okay. Well, you make sense. You have to take in consideration the applications. This is true. When you have a silk screen, it's a mesh. So when you look out like a screen door, you can kind of see a mesh. For silk screen, you have very fine meshes or very coarse meshes. So I can print with different particle sizes. So the ink that Tomi used, this was a company called TW Graphics from California. And they have really, really, really nice inks. And a gallon of ink will range anywhere from 40 to $150 for a gallon of ink or, or a little slightly more. But the particle sizes are ground down to almost an automotive standard. Now, when you're using to something that's conductive, it's basically a metal. So you have to have a very fine particulate size. I've also seen where the mesh of the screen is so coarse that people can print with sand. So where every grain of sand can actually pass through the screen. You can actually have a textured print made by sand. So you can combine sand or carborundum with a clear base or a color and pass it through the screen. So now all of a sudden, instead of, a, instead of something that's completely flat and you don't feel it, now all of a sudden you're building up textures. So it's kind of fun. I can silk screen on the wall. I can silk screen on a car. I can use chocolate to silk screen. I taught a student how to silk screen chocolate onto fondant, and then she wrapped a cake in the fondant. So she silk screened an image of like her parents. Oh. And then made a cake and then put the fondant onto the cake and it had their picture on it in chocolate. Question. So I see her book. Um, sorry, just uh, this is fantastic. I, I never even knew about silk screening so this I'm definitely gonna go back to circle back to that but so she said like the edge of the paper like all these are the same size but I can tell hers is like how do you like cut it like how do you achieve that kind of so, it's, it feels like she has the the mold the right the trim around the molding you have to have, to get these really nice edges because a lot of times and you'll see it here you'll see like when I fold the paper, it has that kind of like, where it's like slightly off when I fold it. Like paper, technically, you'll never be able to fold it in half more than eight times. It's, it's physically impossible. Okay. So like you, whatever size paper it is, it doesn't matter. It's impossible to fold it more than eight times. And a lot of that has to do with all the compression of the paper, even though it's okay. just a piece of paper. Now, when I'm folding something over, I'll use Tony's book so you can see this. <laughs> so that little spot, after I fold it again, will grow and grow and grow. So when I'm doing this, it really helps to have something like a bone folder or, or, or a horn folder, whatever you want to use. So when I'm doing it, I'll actually measure it out with a ruler when I'm using a nice piece of paper. You know, I'll use this book as my ruler. So I'll take this and I'll score the paper. And that's the other thing that a bone folder is good for. And I don't know if you guys can actually see this with this lighting in here. Let's see if I can get this close. But there's a little tiny score in the paper. Can you guys see that? Yeah. So that score in the paper makes it want to fold at that spot. So now when I take that, and fold it over, it wants to fold at that edge. And then when I use my bone folder or horn folder, whatever, it's a very nice, clean, crisp line. So when Tommy was doing this, she actually scored and folded each piece so that when she folds it, it's nice and neat. And you don't have that weird little kind of like. Oh, they, oh, it froze for a second. <laughs> 
<laughs> so, you know, having something like this helps. You know, it wasn't totally perfect. You can kind of see this little spot right here. So even when she was doing it, there's a little slight spot. So it's not that it's a perfect science. Okay. You guys have yeah. any, any other questions? I mean, we, we've blown through our hour class, but. <laughs> uh, that's, oops, sorry. <laughs> One question about the um, accordion fold. Uh -huh. so how do you get the paper on it? Because I mean, I imagine if you want it to be, have a lot of pages, you need a lot of paper, but like, how do you attach it so it's long enough? You know so what I mean? This, good question. So this one was just one piece of paper. So there's no attaching. Okay. When, when you look at Mark's book, and the way to see that is by flipping over. So here is where the two pages are glued together. So there's about an inch and a half overlap from one set of pages to the next. And what you do is you're going to glue it together with jade glue on the back side. So you're not seeing it from the front. On the front, you don't see anything. The, trans the transition is okay. But on the back, when you flip it over, you can actually see where it was glued together. Mm -hmm. so I, can, I can have an accordion book that stretches for 20 feet. I'm not going to use a 20 foot piece of paper, but I can have paper that's like, I don't know, two feet. And then at the end of each two feet piece, I have two inches extra that I can glue to the back of the next one. So I can continue making it as long as I want. Got you. Cool. Cool. Amazing. Love it. <laughs> I learned all different things today. <laughs> Great. I mean, you know, it's one of those things where I hope you take, you know, enough information from it and you can go on and kind of like have fun with this. Um, you know, the craft center's here. Hopefully we all get to see each other in person eventually in the future, sometime soon, hopefully. But, you know, hopefully this at least gets you started thinking about little fun projects. Yeah, it definitely has. What is your name? I'm sorry, I didn't catch your name. I'm sure it's not Catherine, maybe. No, Catherine's actually who's controlling the computer in the other room. She's she's doing all the uh, the stuff for me. Uh, my name is Dominic. 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 Thank you, Dominic. That well, was that was awesome. <laughs> no problem. And like I said, you know, during the regular school year, I'm here and I'm actually teaching. I've been teaching here since I moved down here from New York. So this will be three years. So I've been doing silk screening classes down here, like beginning and advanced silk screen classes. Um, I did a uh, relief printing class here and, you know, and today mm -hmm. a book making class. So, you know, oh, yeah. so, you know, when you get a chance, stop on by. Definitely. All right. All right. Thank you so much. <laughs> Are there any final questions you have or you're good? No? I think I'm good. All right. Great. Well, thanks again. And hopefully. All right. See ya. <laughs> Thank you. Bye.